I'm Kerry Wilson and I farm with my husband John in North East Victoria, a little town called Violet Town. We have merino sheep for wool and we're hoping that this year is the end of quite a prolonged drought. I come from an urban background in Melbourne, came here in the 70s. I worked as a teacher and then retired from teaching to have children and was very involved uh, physically in the farming partnership. Women on Farms I heard about via the radio and we'd been through some very hard times on the farm and I thought that sounds like something I'd really like to try. So I enrolled and my first gathering was in Beechworth in 2001 and what really impressed me was the welcoming of the women and the diversity of women from different farming backgrounds and all the things that they were involved in over that weekend from workshops to tours and it involved not just farming enterprises but wonderful things like textiles and produce and lots of um, animals and plants and yeah and but it was the camaraderie too and the support from the rural women at that gathering that became, I became a convert to. Our flock, our uh, flock of sheep was diagnosed with ovine yonis, which is a wasting disease when sheep are in their prime. So the policy in Victoria at the time was if you destocked, which meant all the flock went for slaughter, that you would get uh, compensation. So we chose that option because we've got farm in three different physical places and we weren't allowed to have stock on the road for a, a couple of years. But it meant that the breeding program that we were doing since John started in the 70s, uh, we lost that genetic pool. He also had a couple of heart operations and a cancer operation and we had to decide what we would uh, go back into. So we chose a bull, bull beef operation, but since the drought this year we've had to destock the bull beef because of the high cost of, of feeding. And the other thing that when we did go back into sheep, we struck, uh, a couple of summers ago now, we struck the coldest ever day recorded in February, and of the 1,200 sheep we had, we lost 1,100 overnight, where they basically suffered hypothermia and it was the most amazing thing to experience as animal farmers who sort of care about their animals to see them. You felt like they, you know, that they were still alive. They were sort of sitting in groups under trees and anywhere they could huddle really. But yes, it was quite a thing to see and to sort of recover from. But now we're back into sheep and we're hoping for rain and then we can stop feeding them all this expensive grain. There was a wonderful icon developed by one of the women's daughters who made this beautiful sculptural icon of a rose. She used a long barbed wire stem which really to me symbolised the strength and sinew that's involved with people who work on the land and also it symbolised the theme of take time to smell the roses and so the bloom which was made from a recycled tobacco tin has this wonderful pattern of bronze into sort of mild gold colours and just reminds you that life's not all tough that there's some beautiful moments and you know we should enjoy the journey. At the Beechworth gathering, that was my first gathering, the curator from Museum Victoria talked about this possibility to have a unique partnership and I thought that seemed like a terrific project to get involved with so I signed up and I have found it really a life enhancing program because it's an opportunity for a grassroots community group to work with perhaps the major institution for recording stories and memories um, in Victoria. The museum itself has actually recognised the heritage program by making Rhonda Diffie and myself honorary associates of the museum. And to us that really strengthens our relationship with Museum Victoria and it recognises that it's the women themselves who 
are the keepers of their own stories.